Hello everybody, my name is Brady and we are back with another React video and today we're going to be checking out more Salmonella. We're finally doing it. We're doing dead body hijinks. This should be fun. Um, there's two of them. So, of course, we're going to be doing the first one first and we're going to be doing the second one. Yeah, so uh, this should be interesting. Uh, I've heard little stories about people's bodies, like, like important people's bodies like being brought like on tours and stuff and they're being like uh some th this might go into like some pt barnum stuff maybe i i'm not sure like i know he got his hand on at least one funky dead body though i can't remember exactly how the story went so i guess we'll see how that goes i i'm, I'm very excited about this and there's two full episodes of this i can only imagine how many uh, examples there are of this stuff, but uh, we'll see. He's got all of history to work with, so let's get this started. Thanks to Dashlane for sponsoring this video. Hey kids, whether you're a precocious young lad down by the swimming hole or a grizzled crime scene investigator, everybody's got some interest in dead bodies. Yes, from Weekend at Bernie's to okay. Weekend at Bernie's 2 to Weekend at Bernie's 3 revelations, stories about wayward corpses have certainly carved their niche in today's media. So I thought I'd spin a few yarns about some real life people who were kept out far past their expiration date. Our first tale follows one Elmer McCurdy. He was an outlaw during the twilight days of the Wild West. Thanks to his former life as a miner, McCurdy acted as the demolitions expert to his little posse, using nitroglycerin basically any time he had the faintest excuse to do so. Except, he was kind of a moron, so it didn't usually go quite as planned. Gotta say, after peanut butter and chocolate, my favorite combination of two things is probably gross incompetence and high explosives. Example. Nitroglycerin, like, isn't that in like heart medication and stuff? But I guess it's also flammable? That, that, well, I guess there's some crossover between uh, medications and highly flammable substances, so I, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised there. I'm just trying to see if I remember. Simple. In March of 1911, McCurdy's band of rabble rousers found out that $4,000 were in a safe in an approaching train. They managed to stop the entire locomotive, <laughs> I don't even know how you do that, break in, hold everyone on board hostage, and locate the safe. McCurdy steps up to play it, right? Gotta blast the thing open, except I guess the excitement kinda got to him, cause he ended up using like way too much I nitroglycerin, like inordinate amounts. Ended up completely destroying the safe and its contents, and what few silver coins they made out with were literally melted to the frame of the safe and had to be peeled off. Anyway, he died in a shootout with police later that year, and the undertaker at the funeral home he was sent to couldn't find any next of kin on account of McCurdy being a rambling low-life varmint, so he just embalmed the hell out of him and said, hey boys and girls, wanna see a dead criminal? Only one shiny nickel. And since Live Leak wasn't around at the time, there weren't many places a kid could go to stare at a corpse for a while if he or she so desired, so it actually became a pretty popular attraction. Visitors would pay their by physically slipping the coin into the man's mouth, and the creepy ass undertaker oh. would come fish him out later, probably with bare hands, all slowly and sensual like. A few. I feel like I've heard about that, unless this is a uh, a more common a more common practice than I thought of putting coins in the mouth of a dead body. Uh, but I feel like that one element is something that I've heard before. And I thought that was like, that came from like the P.T. Barnum thing, but maybe I'm mixing that up with something else that I read. Maybe I even heard about this beforehand and mixed it up with another thing. I don't know. A few years passed when a couple of guys showed up claiming to be McCurdy's brothers with a note from the local sheriff to back it up. They told the undertaker they had permission to go bury McCurdy, so he reluctantly relinquished the body to the men. Except like, these guys weren't his brothers. They were just a couple of crusty freaking carnies. They shipped the body off to Kansas to become an attraction in the traveling show. From here McCurdy traded hands a few more times. At one point he was exploited for this one guy's film about narcotics. He was like yeah this pill popping degenerate got shot while trying to rob a pharmacy for more dope the other day. The body was super old by then so people are like wait why is he all desiccated and flaky and gross? He just goes yep that's what happens when you do drugs kids. Your fucking skin falls off. 
stay above the influence. At some point in his journey, he ended up getting coated in wax and paint to look a little less rotty, before ending up in a warehouse in 1949. Here's the thing, he was in there alongside some actual wax figures, and after spending 19 years in storage, oh, nobody no. knew he was a real corpse anymore, so he ended up getting sold in 1968 as a mannequin to one Spoonie Singh, owner of the Hollywood Wax Museum. He tried to lend the guy out a couple times during his stay, but people found him too gross or unrealistic looking for whatever purposes they had in mind. So he ended up getting sold again and used as a prop of a hanged man at the Pike Amusement Zone in their fun house ride, with zero knowledge that he was an actual dead criminal. It wasn't until 1976, 65 years after his death, that an episode of The Six Million Dollar Man was being filmed at the complex, and a stagehand tried to move the prop around only to have its arm break off in his hand. He was like, ugh, lousy stiff. Wait a minute, that's curious. This mannequin's got human flesh and bones inside of it. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. 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 The autopsy confirmed what everyone present at the time suspected. By this point, the body was so dried out and stale that it only weighed 50 pounds. Which makes me think, we should start a radical new fad diet where we just get people to mummify parts of their body. Like, Jenny, guess oh, what? God. I just lost 30 pounds in 5 days. Wow, holy heck, how'd you do that? They call it the Egyptian cleanse. Anyway, with that, McCurdy was finally laid to rest back in his homeland of Oklahoma, and that film crew's lives were never the same again. Flashback to Lady- Hold on. Okay, so I thought I would take a look at the Wikipedia and see if there was anything that rung a bell because there are elements of this story that sound like things I've heard before, but I have no idea in what context I would have heard this story before. And then I'm I'm looking at it. I'm I'm not I'm not seeing anything. I I, I I'm I'm trying, but I am I'm not really finding anything. So I guess I've just convinced myself that I've heard elements of this story before, or there are things in this that may cross over into other dead body hijinks. I don't know how many stories like this there could be, though. Oh, well, I'm just going to go back. 18th century baloney there lived a physician by the name of luigi galvani this guy was a big deal he's the dude who discovered that hey animals got electricity in them and his legacy still Shit. survives today in words like galvanize one of his most oh. famous experiments was the one where he used static electricity to make frog legs twitch on command around these parts we call that the french salute <laughs> Stereotypes funny. Well, in 1803, his nephew, Giovanni Aldini, said, Hey, that's pretty nifty and all, but uh, what if we tried it on people? So the city of London was like, Hey, now you're thinking with portals. One freshly executed criminal coming up. Aldini gathered a crowd and applied two diodes to the corpse's head, causing his face to scrunch up and one eye to flick open. Aldini was a showman, though. He wanted some real action. So he then put the current through opposite points in the body, which made the whole thing flail around like Pinocchio in heat. Now today we know he was just exciting the dead muscles, right? But the people who were watching had no idea what was going on. So they were like, Jesus Christ, this guy's a fucking necromancer. Quick, go get grandma, maybe we can get in the will after all. Fun fact, this experiment actually ended up serving as inspiration for Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Which makes me wonder what other famous novels were based on real life events. Was a white whale ever pursued by a vengeful sea captain? Was there actually a mentally handicapped migrant worker who liked hugging rabbits to death? Was there ever a human soul as profoundly asinine and willfully ignorant as Amelia Bedelia. God, I hate her glassy-eyed face so fucking much. I just want to mash it into a running waffle maker, be like, ha, isn't that ironic? Grab her by her vacant fucking head, throw her out of a 747 and say, hey, why didn't you shoot yourself when you had the chance? Get it! <sighs> anyway, one thing we... I don't get that one, um, but clearly there's some beef there. Um... That's actually really interesting. One of my favorite stories ever uh, finds some inspiration in, like, the Frankenstein stuff. So, like, Frankenstein is kind of a story that's close. Like, one of my favorite stories is uh, it comes from H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, it's a Herbert West reanimator, and that clearly has, like, some Frankenstein elements to it. Uh, so Frankenstein itself is also a story that's like really important to me when it comes to like uh, that sort of like I guess the darker side of literature it gets darker than Frankenstein but th that's one of them um, so it's kind of cool to know that there's like a real life 
story that may have like an inspired people's fascination with the idea of reanimation and stuff. So there, there's something there. Oh, good old Herbert West. What learned today is the importance of reputability. And just as you wouldn't want some dirty carnies jacking your stiff phrasing, you certainly wouldn't want the same fate to befall your valuable online information. That's why you need to try Dashlane. Dashlane's been all over the place recently, and with good reason. In this day and age, cybersecurity and privacy have never been more important, and only a select few people have the time, energy, and know-how to keep their data as safe as humanly possible. What Dashlane does is, it takes all your passwords and autofill data across all your devices and uses the power of encryption to keep them out of the hands of lowly hackers. PC, Mac, iOS, Android, Chrome, Safari, Firefox, doesn't matter, Dashlane's got your back. Something especially cool about it is that you can automatically change your passwords right in Dashlane without fiddling with stupid security questions from six years ago you don't know the answer to for an hour. Dashlane Premium even comes with a VPN, so now you can take full advantage of unsecured Wi-Fi without ever worrying that the janitor in the back of Starbucks knows about those horrific purchases you're making. So please, go to dashlane.com slash salmonella to try Dashlane Premium free for 30 days. Also, the first 200 people who use the promo code salmonella will get 10% off their Dashlane Premium subscription. By the way, this video ended up being way too long, so stay tuned for part 2 in a week or two. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Salmonella, and thank you for watching. Some people ask why I sit there through the ads, and honestly, I don't have a great answer. Um, for some reason, I feel obligated. Like, I watch through their video for the sake of my video, and I'm just like, they put time and effort into creating this ad and trying to make it as compelling as possible. Like, the least I can do is watch their ad and not, I, I don't know, but I don't, it, it's very likely that that ad is not active. That promo code probably isn't active. I don't know, did 200 people sign up, do you think, after this? Maybe. Uh, it's hard to get people to click a link, let alone use your promo code, so uh, I don't know. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. This was a fun one. I'm going to probably jump right into part two tomorrow. Like, I, I don't see why not. Um, yeah, I'll do that. All right. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what other videos you want me to check out. I'm going to be wrapping up a lot of the Salmonella stuff. Uh, I'm not gonna have all that much left after this stuff. So any other creators you want me to check out? Let me know. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. All right